floor before the power outage. Um, Thank you, Madam Speaker. We still have the floor. What a powerful, you see. Uh, Thank you for all that time to work on the amendment, ma'am. Um, Madam Speaker, and, and uh, with regards to, to the amendment being uh, proffered by the uh, good mover from, from Aganya Heights, um, I, there was some concern that I had with regards to the utilization of the word violation. Uh, and my concern is, is it may be construed to be not so much to talk about the, the, the event itself as opposed to it may be also be construed as a classification of the crime. And I want to thank uh, working with the legal consuls um, so that um, my amendment would, uh, this would be the amendment for the section two, subsection 19117 sub item E, uh, the amendment at the bottom, and it would strike out where it reads, shall be subject to a civil penalty of not more than $5,000 per, strike out the word, instance of violation, each separately produced message, and each individual broadcast of every separately produced message. So, and period, and then it will, so it, it will strike out the word, instance of violation, and then strike out all of the words after the word message, which constitutes an instance of a violation. Let me see if I understand that then. So it should read subject to a civil penalty of not more than $5,000 per, per what? Each separately produced per message. each separately produced message, all the way to and after each. the other message, produced message, Period. And, yes. and strike out the rest constitutes a an instance of violation. Yes, ma'am. On the amendment. Any discussion? No objections? So ordered. Madam Speaker, I have do I do have another amendment that would make keep this consistent. Actually if you go up to the top uh, the second line of the same of the same amendment, um, it says every person who willfully causes, produces, provides for or assist in the production of, uh, change the word advertising to messages. Change advertising to messaging? M messages. Messages. So on the second line of subsection E will be to delete advertising and add the word messages in production of messages of a political nature. Right. On that amendment, without any objection, so ordered. Thank you. So, on the uh, amend, uh, on the amendment that has been amended, which is subsection E that has been amended, are there? Uh, oh, you want to speak on it? Yes. Senator uh, Munya Barnes, you're recognized. See, just Mossy, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, I just want to ask that that civil penalty of five thousand dollars per instant. Is there a dedicated source right now? So I guess I would inquire to Senator the- Senator Respicio, uh, the qu there's a question to you. Is where would the 5,000 penalty per instance go if, if this thing was ad adjudicated and the fund had to be paid? Senator, do you yield to the question? It's a great uh, question, Madam Speaker. There's currently no, I guess it's the treasurer of Guam, but there's currently no, um, fund that's been identified or created to accept those penalties. Okay, Senator, were you Ma Madam with the Madam Speaker, if I may then, then after the period, or just add a new paragraph, or maybe even a new section that said, if said um, um, penalty is, is recorded, then the set funds would go to the Guam Election Commission. Can you read my, if? If, uh, can you repeat that one more time? So the new the section new would section. read that for uh, that, that set fund, that set penalty 
will go into a separate fund with the Guam Election Commission, for the Guam Election Commission. Right? Are you going to be creating a specific name for that fund? Senator, let me give, I take a brief recess so we can write that, OK? okay. Legislature is back in session. Um, while Senator Munya Barnes is working on an amendment, which will really be a new section, not part of subsection E, then I'm going to go ahead and call for the vote then for subsection E. There being no objections, so ordered. And uh, now we're going to be waiting for the new amendment. So we're going to have a brief recess. Yeah. Legislature is back in session. Senator Munya Barnes, you still have the floor Sito for Smasi, an amendment. Sito Madam Speaker, for giving me the opportunity on work, on work, to work on my amendment. And uh, my amendment, Madam, my proposed amendment, Madam Speaker, is just to add the following at the end of the bill to read, um, which would be a new section. The fines herein shall go to the general fund for the use of the Guam Election Commission, subject to the appropriation by the Guam legislature, uh, period. And then reports of all fines shall be given quarterly to the Imagalahi and I Leslatura. On the amendment? No objections? So ordered. Thank you. Please make sure that the clerks uh, get a copy of that. Senator Mabini, you're recognized. Oh, wait. Oh, that's OK. We completed, Senator Respicio, on your amendment. Uh, Senator Mabini, you're recognized on the motion. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, on the amendment submitted by the author, uh, let's see, amendment line, excuse me, amendment number two, line 21, page three. <coughs> Just a small uh, correction or suggestion for modification. It'll be an impact on the on the on how the legislation is read or carried out. On the second line, where it says um, production of uh, advertising of a political n nature, to change advertising to a message. So it should. Is it? Oh, excuse me. Uh, to okay. singular message, a right. message, not messages. Okay, so uh, yes, yeah. so, right. And so then on uh, subsection E, where we had changed it to messages, it will be corrected to a message. Yeah, that's it. A singular. Thank okay. you. Okay, without any objections, so ordered. Senator Rispicio, is, is there anybody else who would like to speak on the bill? So then uh, on the motion then to send uh, bill number one, I mean 27-31 to the third reading file. No objections. So ordered. Thank you, senators. And uh, now. Okay, bill number 126. No, 126. And uh, trying to, by Senator uh, 
Anthony Ada, you're recognized on Bill 126. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I'd just like to make a, a slight amendment to um, Bill 126 on line 18. And it's to insert the word, uh, insert or after the word prevent and delete the words or impede on line 18. So it should read of Guam may prevent or deny the recording audio and or video of any public meeting. Clerk, are you able to get that amendment? On the amendment, okay. is, I am repeating one more time again for the clerks, please. On line 18, to insert the word, insert or after the word prevent and delete the words or impede. Or impede. Okay. On the amendment, then without any objections. So, so ordered. Uh, then so on the motion then to send. Send it to third, please, Madam Speaker. Okay, and the motion to send Bill 126 at the third reading file without any objections. So ordered. Uh, we're now on Bill 152. Uh, right, 152. Senator Opalashis. Oh, oh, we did yours already. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. Okay, so... Oh, sorry, 157 now. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I move that Bill number 157-31 uh, be accepted, the substitute uh, on the floor version be accepted um, for discussion, and it's, and it's uh, labeled uh, number two. On the motion to accept without any objection, so ordered. Madam Speaker, I move that the Bill number 157-31 as substitute on the floor uh, be placed in the voting file with some very brief discussion. You may proceed, Senator. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. And I want to thank you and thank uh, my colleagues for allowing me to uh, represent um, the, uh, Bill 157. And this uh, represented uh, version, Madam Speaker, I think uh, accomplishes uh, what I'm intending to do here with respect to saying that if in the event the, uh, the governor, the lieutenant governor and senators failed to enact an operating uh, budget uh, in time for the start of the new fiscal year, uh, which will lead to a government shutdown, uh, barring, of course, any uh, natural disasters, that uh, these uh, uh, group of uh, groups of elected officials shall not be uh, compensated for that duration. And so in this substituted uh, version, I went into the, the statute that, that authorizes the governor to have his salary, uh, and that's what I did. Uh, went into the statute that authorizes the lieutenant governor's salary, and that's where I put uh, that subsection be that states in the event uh, there's no budget and what happens after that. And in section three, uh, Madam Speaker, I recognize um, the mechanism to which the current uh, senators are being paid, uh, and I presented that as a new uh, item C, uh, which which would carry out what would happen in the event of a lack of pass, the inability to pass a budget, which leads to a government uh, shutdown. On page four. Madam Speaker, I also wanted to uh, recognize in perpetuity uh, that if you read subsection B, uh, there was a time in the history of this legislature uh, in fiscal year 2003 uh, where senators took a 27% uh, uh, percent, uh, pay cut uh, because of uh, what happened government-wide when uh, we went down to a 32-hour work week. So I, I wanted to reflect that and have this uh, uh, recognized uh, in perpetuity to, so, to say uh, that it's always the legislature, Madam Speaker, uh, that one point in time where annual leave uh, was suspended, the governor, the lieutenant governor, uh, the attorney general, the public auditor were also asked to do the same, but you know it was only the legislature at that time that uh, forfeited our annual leave. At the time when we said that if you're going to cut the salaries of classified employees and the same challenge was put before the governor, the lieutenant governor, uh, the even the judge, the justices, the presiding judge, the judges, and all other um, elected officials, Madam Speaker, it was the legislature, again, that uh, was the only one that offered up our salary. Uh, and so in this um, instance, we're moving toward this uh, area where if in the event uh, we do have a, a government uh, shutdown, we're not going to allow the governor or lieutenant governor any flexibility 
uh, anymore. We're going to recognize that this is a fundamental responsibility between our two branches of government. So both branches have to share uh, in the same amount of pain that our people will be experiencing if in the event we don't have an operating budget which would lead to a shutdown. So I, I thank my colleagues for recognizing uh, the importance of uh, this kind of um, a movement and I uh, ask that uh, they continue to support this. And I thank you for the opportunity to speak on Bill 157 uh, as substitute on the floor. On the motion, none. On the motion then to send 157-31 to the third reading file without any objections, so ordered. Senator Respicio, you're recognized for a motion. Thank you, um, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I believe our colleague, uh, Senator Blas, has made copies of Bill 15-31. Uh, Madam Speaker, I make a notwithstanding motion to uh, allow Bill 15 to be placed on the top of the second reading file. Uh, on behalf of the sponsor, I want to recognize our chairman of uh, the Committee on uh, Appropriations and, and for filing a uh, committee report uh, to which the Committee on Rules received and it's been uploaded. Uh, this is a, an act to establish a policy for the approval of workforce housing facilities for temporary uh, workers. So this bill uh, is eligible for placement on the agenda, and I move that um, it be placed there on the sec top of the second reading file. What's the number again? Bill 15-31. Copies of the bill have been uh, made and distributed. Um, I don't have a copy. Okay. Thank you. So... On that motion, then, without any objections, so ordered. Senator Blosh, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, I move to place Bill 15-31 um, in the uh, third reading file, and I'd also like an opportunity to dis discuss it, please. Please proceed. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, before I move, I, I, I want to also um, openly and wish to, to, to thank and commend the, uh, the, the good oversight chair of... of um, the committee, the, the good senator from, from Barragata uh, and his committee for, for working diligently. The, this, this bill had a public hearing a couple weeks ago and recognizing the, the, the amount of work uh, that uh, his committee has had, uh, it was, I think it was an exceptional thing to be able to get this out and get it ready for, for, um, for, for session today. Um, and, and Madam Speaker, what Bill 1531 is, is an act to establish a policy for the approval of workforce housing facilities for temporary workers. And Madam Speaker, if you, as, as you know, then, the, there is a, num a lot of discussion today and there's a lot of preparation that is, that is currently ongoing with regards to um, how we're going to prepare for um, a buildup or an expansion to our economy and to our population um, and how we're going to be able to, to, to deal with this. Um, in 2009, the Guam Land Use Commission, basically what, what they did was they enacted within their body a res resolution that uh, uh, the, the Land Use Commission uh, utilizes to be able to deal with, with the number of applications that uh, the commission has um, from, from entities wanting to, to, to produce and construct a, a Workforce housing facilities. In their um, in their deliberation and discussions, they developed a resolution, that, like I said, that that helps them. Uh, that basically sets out the parameters as to how they're going to how they were they, they were going to deal with these issues. What Bill 15-31 provides is it takes that resolution and now is in this attempt in this legislation to make it into a law. Is 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 now so that. This is what you were using as a resolution. We now want to make this, a, make, make this the law as to how you're going to be able to deal with the application and the process of developing workforce housing. I think in the discussion, some of the discussions that we had, most especially during the public hearing, there was some concern with regards to how the term workforce housing, temporary workforce, workforce housing um, is defined. And in response to that, Madam Speaker, and I've passed the, uh, the uh, amendment out to everybody, and I, hopefully you, you should have a copy of it as well, ma'am. And what the amendment that I'm going to proffer, what it would basically do is 
on page 2, line 12, um, number 1, where it says the term temporary workforce housing shall include. The amendment will amend or change number 1 to read the term temporary workforce housing shall be consistent with subsection 4 1703i of article 17 enacted to pursuant and enacted pursuant to public law 30-64 and then, then it has the definition temporary workforce housing means and you have the amendment before you so this will help to allay the concerns that were raised not only in the public hearing but also amongst members uh, of, of this body and there was some possible confusion as to what term or what workforce housing would mean. And this body um, in the previous legislature had enact enacted legislation and is now law that put out a definitive or, or definition and to be consistent with that definition that we had, uh, that, that we had worked on in the 30th Guam legislature, uh, this legislation will show that, that the workforce housing, the definition will be consistent uh, with, with that already enacted in law. So, Senator, um, I know you're saying that to amend to read, but do you want to, we need to delete the existing, what you have here from line delete. 12 to 15 and then replace it with this new? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so that will be the language in. So, on the amendment then, which is to delete on page 2, lines 1. I mean, 12 to 15, and replace it with this new language, which is uh, the term temporary workforce housing and what it also means. On that amendment, no objections? Sorted. On the uh, motion, could you still well, want to continue? I'll, thank you, Madam Speaker, and, uh, and um, I. I'm, be interested to hear the, the, the discussions that um, we, we may have on the floor with regards to this bill. Um, I'm asking my colleagues again for the support. I know that the good senator uh, and, the, and the good chairman um, of the oversight committee has uh, an amendment to proffer, um, of which I know there will be continued discussions. Thank you very much. On, on the motion, Speaker Panglinen, you're recognized. <laughs> Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I. Uh, I have the amendment being copied, and so it should be available very shortly. But I wanted to uh, present an amendment and propose an amendment for the body. Uh, and basically, Madam Speaker, uh, when individuals come in for this rezoning, they, um, by the rule, they are rezoning the property to M1. And then once the rezoning is approved, then the application for conditional use to use it as workforce housing gets filed also. And so what I wanted to, to do, Madam Speaker, and given that we're now only allowed, the conditional use of this workforce housing is in the M1 areas. So if you had an agricultural zone and you wanted to use it for workforce housing, you first have to change the zoning from agricultural to M1. And we're seeing, uh, because of the uh, properties being uh, available, we're seeing some applications go into that process. The problem is that if you come in and you use it for workforce housing, and then the buildup is gone, then you have all these M1s all over the place that are now not being used for workforce housing. So the amendment I had, uh, I have, Madam Speaker, would be to ensure that if they are rezoning it for workforce housing, that they are up front with it so that they don't come in, rezone, and then come in two years, five years later, and so forth, that it is for that purpose and they can make a decision based upon that. The other thing is, what do you do with the property with all these M1s after the workforce housing is no longer being used? Now you have these properties where developers can parcel out the property and now you, where you used to have you know, 50 acres of M1 property, if they, parcel it out, now you can have 50 one-acre M1s, and that's really not what we want to create by approving these M1s, I mean, this workforce housing only at M1s. So what 
the amendment I have, Madam Speaker, is that to add a new section, we would say for any property rezoned to M1 within two years of also applying for a conditional use for workforce housing, the property shall revert to the zone prior to the granting of the M1 zone when the approval for workforce housing expires. And in the bill, you have annual re reapprovals of this M1 zone. So when it expires uh, and they stop using it, then it goes back. If it was agriculture, it goes back to agriculture. And then if you want to use it for something else, then you have to reapply. Or a new application for continued M1 must be filed. So if the workforce housing expires and you don't go back to the original zoning, and you want to keep it M1, you got to file a new application. Because really, the impetus for granting you M1 was for workforce housing because that's the only place you can put workforce housing. You can't put it in R2, you can't put it in commercial, you can only put it in M1 zone. So that was the reason why you were given. Not so that that property will, and that whole area will now be an M1 in light industrial area. So the amendment would, would kind of confine this thing and have it re-examined after the use of the purpose for rezoning it to M1 in the first place, which is for the workforce housing. So that's the amendment I'm offering, Madam Speaker, to add that new section. On the amendment, no objections to the amendment? So we're on the motion, on the main motion. Anyone who would like to speak on it? Senator Blas, would you like to close? Send it down. So on the motion then to send Bill 15-31 to third reading file without any objections. So order it. Uh, where's the majority leader? So can I ask, and since the majority leader is not here, can, uh, Speaker Panglinen, can you make the motion for 155 to be pulled up? Didn't we already? No, we didn't. Yeah. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I would like to then uh, make a motion to revert back to motions for the purpose of bringing bill number 155 back to the top of the second reading file. On the motion without any objections, so order it. All right. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I now make the motion to bring bill 55 from the third reading to the 155 to the top of the second reading file. On that motion without any objections, so order it. Thank you. Senator Munya Barnes can come up here. Speaker Wampad, you're recognized. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, uh, I'd like to um, place Bill 155 in the third reading file uh, for discussion. On that motion, no objections. Motion and carries. Please proceed. Uh, Madam Speaker, I'd like to um, add an amendment uh, to Bill 155. and. I, I don't have copies uh, for all of you because I want to save a couple of trees, but there, it's, it's in. If you can pull out uh, Bill 156 and look at Section 5, because the language there at Section 5 is exactly the language in which I am proposing to, to add on as a, an amendment to 155. And, and if I may, I'd like to be able to um, just explain it briefly. Uh, what. You, what you're going to see in, in this amendment now, this bill was actually hurt, uh, originally hurt, yes, when uh, on the 30th Guam legislature, when we were trying to find um, an, another option of building a northern high school, and the community uh, did not want the original uh, location for a new uh, northern high school, and it. Overwhelmingly, it was uh, the community in that area, plus the JFK family and uh, DOE, uh, that basically directed and, uh, the, the legislature to expand Okudu and also had asked for an increase in their enrollment. So 
the number then of uh, classrooms that are going to be built uh, to be able to address uh, the overcrowding would be to house 600 students above its current population. It would also build the culinary arts uh, classrooms that were not built in the original uh, Okudu uh, High School. It will build a whole wing. And, and the, I have actually back there behind me on the table uh, the uh, rendition of what the, it would look like. And in addition, they're actually going to be able to go out and do the resurfacing of the track and build a, a building, a separate building for showers and, and restrooms and locker rooms uh, for the students that are, are um, out at the field. So those are the new, the, the additions to the, um, the facility. What this bill, uh, this amendment actually would do, Madam Speaker, is that it would be a, a major cost savings for the government because we are taking advantage of the uh, qualified school construction bonds. What that, and that was, and it's for, uh, we were given that for two years. And what it would do is that when we go out and get a loan, and the loan that we maxed, uh, the percentage was as was uh, 7.5. I mean 8.5. And uh, what the the construction bond would do is pay 5.5 percent of that. And my understanding is that we have two local institutions, uh, banking institutions, who are very uh, interested in actually you know, purchasing these bonds and it's at the rate of 7.5, then therefore ultimately what the government will be paying would be about 2% uh, of, of that loan. The other uh, is that we, there is um, to be able then to amortize it at uh, 15 years instead because the, the school construction bond is actually good for two years and then the additional, uh, the 16th and the 17th year will be paid off by the tax exempt bonds. Uh, and then that will be paid off rather by the 16th and the 17th year. By, by doing that, we would realize a savings of really is about 35, $35.4 million of interest payments will be a savings and potentially annually uh, we're looking at $161,000 um, that will, you know, be a savings for the government, but that's annually. So let's not all jump now to try to reappropriate that $161,000. Uh, as, as I said earlier, our local banks are involved in this, which is great because we want to keep it, of course, in our local economy. And, uh, uh, and uh, this Actually, the, the language uh, I, that I stated there is going to go from 30 to 17. And then if you look at the next uh, page where this is a pledge of the Section 30 revenues and to give our new members a, a little more background was that there was a $9.8 million obligation payback about um, six point. After 6.8, I think a million was going to go to JFK to pay for the JFK bond, and then the balance will be for uh, this extension at, at Okudu High School. These, um, and, and one more time just to say is that the federal subsidy of the school bond is at 5.5. GovGuam will be responsible for only the interest that is unsubsidized by the federal government and the federal subsidies are only available for taxable loans, and then most of these loans are non-tax exempt. And uh, so if the maximum is 5.5 by the federal government, I know that our mandate is 8.5, but we know that our local banks are gonna get it at 7.5. And as a matter of fact, uh, there are also, there's some interest that our local banks are interested in possibly even getting additional, purchasing additional, uh, more of these bonds at a lower interest rate. So that again, you know, we can realize again, uh, some uh, savings. So uh, I like to, to let you know that the language that you're seeing here is, is not 
a language that I'm just proposing on my own. This actually came from uh, Stan Dirks when he was out here last week. Uh, like I said, this was actually passed before and uh, last year, and we thought that the language uh, was okay, that we were able to move forward uh, with it. And, but I know and I thank all of you when we also had to do this to, again, correct another language, and that is to go from the word may to shall, and now this is the third language. And I really, you know, I, I beg, of course, your, your indulgence, and I really hope that this would be the last uh, and that this should be sufficient for us to move forward then in purchasing these, uh, these bonds. So uh, I ask uh, my colleagues for your support in, in, uh, in voting for this, uh, this amendment to be placed on Bill 155. Thank you, Madam Speaker. On, on the amendment, I have Vice Speaker. I recognize you. Madam Speaker, can we just have a few minutes? Have a one minute break.
And Vice Speaker Cruz, you're recognized. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Um, I appreciate the time that you've given me to get some explanation, but I just want to put something on the record at this point, Madam Speaker. I support the idea of providing funds for the Freshman Academy at Okudu, um High School. I have some grave concerns about the design that has been provided to us, and I would hope that somehow we can refrain from expending a, the first penny before they stop and re-look at this design. It has much to be desired, and uh, it's pretty, but it's absolutely non-functional, at least from the experience of my suffering through the discussions of how, what they wanted when they had the high schools at Tizen about all the amenities they wanted. And uh, so I, I support the idea, but this design has much to be desired. Thank you, Vice Speaker. Anyone else wishing to speak on the amendment? Speak, Speaker Pangolinan, you're recognized. On the main, on on the main bill. Oh, okay. Uh, no, we didn't vote on the amendment. Thank, thank you very much, then, Madam Speaker. Just quickly on the amendment. Number one, you know, I certainly um, uh, want to commend a couple of the changes that we made when this bill was originally uh, suggested by Bond Council, by DOE, by everybody that we really needed to do it that one way. And one of the ways was that the interest rate would be a net yield, which means that we conceivably could be paying 13% on the, on the loan because we got the um, uh, Build America bonds and, or the school construction bonds, and then we added 7% 7 or 8.5% on top of that. And of course, that never was the intention. When the presentation was made, it was because we were going to get that federal subsidy and then only pay the difference. And the way that the bill came down from us, again, what was our intention? Very clear in terms of our original intention. They come back and they say, we need to do this in order to do that. And I just, we just questioned them and they said, you're right, you're right. We don't have to do that. We want to make sure that the government of Guam, including the, in, the interest rate subsidy, is no greater than 8.5%. So that's one change we made. Then, of course, they wanted to do this um, the, the Build America bonds plus this certificate of participation notes and we needed to do it this way, we need to go 30 years and we're saying, no, no, wait a minute, you know, we're trying to do the best we can here for the government of Guam and the people of Guam, so why can't we do a 17 year or 15 year note, you know, and defer and, and not have to pay interest on another 23 years or, or uh, 13 years. And so, again, they said, well, you know, we don't think we can do that. We, can, we don't want that. Well, again, we said, we pushed, and we said, yes, you can. So it just goes to show you that, you know, when, when these individuals come down here and they tell us we can't do things and we push and we push and we push, all of a sudden we can. We can save $13, $35 million in interest rates, in interest pay payments over 30 years. We can make sure that the government of Guam does not pay more than 2 dollars half to 3%. And all of a sudden they said, you know, before it was you can't do this. It just goes to show for the other arguments that we've had. When officials come and you can't do this because of this, because of this, because of this, these are the same people that originally told us we couldn't make these changes because we're going to jeopardize the financing. They're the same people who told us we couldn't do what we, need, what we wanted to do in 156 because of all this. It's the same people, yet we believe them here and so forth. So I just wanted to, to bring that up. But I do say that this is a good change. It moves forward the project. Even I have concern on the project and the design and the cost. I certainly am putting a request in to have engineers review that and review the cost and see whether it really should cost 27 or $21 million. Or can we do something so that it wouldn't cost that much? Because the original school that houses 1,400 people didn't, I think, cost us 17 or 23 million. And now we're doing just a small expansion and it's going to cost us 21. So again, we're just trying to ensure that we get the best deal for the people of Guam. And at the same time, ensuring 
that we put our children into the best learning facilities that we can in the quickest way that we can, and this bill will accomplish that, so I support it. Thank you very much, Madam. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Right. So, on the amendment, are there anyone else wishing to speak? If not, you can close. Thank you very much. I just want to make sure that everybody, you know, knows uh, uh, what then the um, the amendment is. What would it entail, rather? I mean, uh, the a new wing, which will be for the ninth grade academy, uh, the culinary arts. Uh, classroom and, and kitchen uh, for the culinary class that uh, GCC offers. It would also include the signalization that's outside the main uh, highway. I'm not sure what that's the road that goes towards uh, Finnegagen because there's a really bad situation there without a uh, traffic light. It would also uh, take care of the resurfacing of the, uh, the track and in and a building for the showers, uh, restrooms, and, and locker room uh, for the children who are out in the field. So that's, you know, I mean, granted, yes, I agree with the, the uh, former speaker. Sometimes we always say that, you know, uh, if you're able to do this at, I mean, more for less, and then we're doing less for more. And, but, you know, I, I'm not a contractor. I don't understand. Uh, what that entails, all I know is that this is definitely a, a need, I know, for the, um, the overcrowding of our schools up north. is something that we're going to have to look into the future again. This is a request that has gone in, is that we need still one new high school, one new middle school, and two elementary schools up north. So, and this is only a, it's only going to make a little dent in in terms of the overcrowding that's taking place up north. So I hope uh, my colleagues uh, you know, can support uh, this amendment. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And, and I don't know whether the vice Well, no, what, the what, what I'll do is, is on the amendment, if okay. there are no objections, motion carries. And now we're back on the main bill, Speaker Pangolinan. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I'd just like to make a motion to add Speaker Wampat and yourself as sp sponsors on this bill, as co-sponsors. Thank you. On that motion, are there any objections? No objections. Motion carries. Is there anyone else wishing to speak? If not, a motion to move it down to, back down to third reading. Reading, Madam Speaker. Yeah. Without any objections to the voting file, motion carries. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a brief recess. It's 10 to 5. We'll just go ahead and take a brief recess right now.
second session to my colleagues. We will uh, go ahead uh, and vote tomorrow morning at 1130. So we will go ahead and recess right now until 1130 for voting. Viva. Viva. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>